Welcome. You're listening to John Highman from Commercial Real Estate Online. This is one of the many videos that we put out to help commercial real estate brokers and agents around the world with particular things relating to sales, leasing or property management. And indeed, in this particular topic, I'll be, coming, I'll be covering commercial property management budgets and what to look for and how to approach the subject. However, before I start that program, let's have a look at the website in case you haven't visited us before. The website is commercial-realestate-training.com and at that website we have plenty of tips, tools and ideas to, to help you, uh, be it in industrial, office or retail property. And even today I loaded a podcast from iTunes relative to certain parts of the industry, so it's all very useful. Remember that you can get plenty of tips, tools and ideas by simply joining up with the community there. So that's the website. Now let's look at this particular program. And this is all about commercial property management budgets. So where do we go? Firstly, the object. The object of a budget in commercial or a retail building is to track and control income and expenditure. That's what it's all about. Every month and every quarter throughout the year, the budget can be compared to actual money earned in rent and spent in outgoings. Adjustments are then made to ensure that the landlord doesn't experience any unknown financial pressures to disrupt the building performance activity. So that is the job of the property manager and it's quite ex important for the property manager to totally understand what they're doing when it comes to uh, the budget itself, how it's tracking when it comes to expenditure and income. And in expenditure, of course, you'll have certain factors which are controlled and others that are uncontrolled, perhaps some unexpected items of expenditure throughout the year. So you have to allow for both. And in the income side of it, uh, you'll have recoverable outgoings to think about and also rental recoveries. So by tracking those two things and tracking them through a budget, you will have adjustments to do on a monthly or a quarterly basis. So that is the object of a budget. So let's go a little bit further. This property management budget is the job of the property manager. Now, that may be you, and indeed, you might be working in the industry now. The role of a commercial property manager is quite significant and quite special, totally different than residential property in many, many different ways. So, even the smallest investment properties will have a budget, and that's where the property manager comes in. That's where they specialise and help with the activities of within that particular property. Take, for example, an industrial warehouse. In a property of that type, there will be complexity to the cash flow, given that most of the outgoings will be in the form of rates and taxes. And repairs and maintenance, of course, will also not be as significant to run an industrial property, given that it is a basic form of investment. Of course, the outgoings could have been offloaded to the tenant through the terms of the lease by way of a net rent. So that's something the property manager would understand. And that is an investment strategy and all is quite good from a leasing and an investment perspective. The point is an industrial property is quite basic. When you move up to uh, an office or a retail property, things become much more complex. So you should have a budget. Uh, that should reflect the overall activity within the property, be it income, expenditure, the budget activity, and perhaps even capital items. But before I go on to capital items, let's look at this a bit more. The budget reflects income and expenditure. The net rent is the result of the difference between income and expenditure. And the outgoings will be that expenditure as to how they are being managed throughout the year. So the expenditure needs to be planned and that's where the budget kicks in. So that is the job of the property manager and they should be doing their budget. Certainly around about the month of March in each financial year ready for the new financial year to start. So. If the budget is created in the month of March, that can take into account the history of the property through the year, and then that can move on into uh, landlord approval and be ready for implementation into the building uh, with the tenants, etc., for recoverable outgoings from the 1st of July. So that's how you should plan the timing of a budget. So let's go a little bit further. Number three, establishing a budget. How would you do it? Well, a couple of ways. Let's have a look at these. Income. You should look at all the factors of income within the property and uh, that will be reviewing the leases, having due regard for market circumstances and also market rentals. Now the income of course will be rental but it might be gross or net. 
let's have a look at reviewing leases. What do you need to look for? Well, you need to look for lease expiry dates, options and rent reviews. How are you going to keep those leases running? How are you going to keep the property well occupied? Now, I have due regard, of course, for particular lease terms and conditions, and that means you do need to read the lease in each and every case. And in a property with a lot of tenants, that can be quite a daunting issue. And outgoings will change from year to year, so have due regard for the industry standards of outgoings relating to a property of its type and size. Now, some of those outgoings will be recoverable, and you will know that by reading the lease. So let's go back here and have a look at another item, and that is market rentals. Throughout the year, from the income perspective, market rentals will change and therefore you need to compare them property to property, area to area, location to location. Understand how the market rentals are growing or changing, perhaps even contracting. That sometimes happens. So understand those market rentals. Then look at the incentives that are out there when it comes to leasing because some incentives will be needed to attract tenants to the property. You don't leave a vacancy there for very long. You need to put some incentives into a deal to get a tenant to take up the premises. And of course, in your budget, you should le allow for letting periods. That will be a period of time where you are uh, expecting a vacancy while you look for another tenant. And it might be one, two or three months. It might even be six months, depending on how big that vacancy is. But you should allow for letting periods when it comes to vacancy assumptions. And of course, within your building at the moment, you should look at the retention of tenants wherever possible. If you want the tenants to stay, of course, at the end of the lease, uh, there will be some certain decisions to be made by the landlord and by the tenants. Uh, do the tenants want to stay? Of course, does the landlord want them to stay? It's a different decision from either side of the fence, but the property manager needs to help with that. So vacancy factors will change throughout the year and, of course, be driven by the market rental activity. So uh, understand what's going on out there and that will be your market rental assessment. So. Looking at these three things, income drives a review of leases, have due regard to the market conditions, and of course, look at the market rentals. So now let's go on to expenditure. Well, in expenditure, you should be looking at last year's figures. In other words, understand what you did achieve last year by way of expenditure and in what categories. That will give you a good way of looking at the future and particularly the upcoming year. And you might like to factor up last year's figures by a certain percentage based on the consumer price index or, or business activity or economic sentiment. Uh, you may also like to retender contracts. Now that's quite a standard process to keep your maintenance under control and within budgetary constraints. So each year some of the major contracts within the building maintenance program should be retendered. And lastly, I'll make a special note here regards capital items. Capital items are those things that are not normal repairs and maintenance activity, and they will be separated for the purposes of taxation. They are still part of the expenditure for the building, but they are not normally recoverable through the tenant. So capital items are separated and applied to the building uh, from a taxation perspective uh, after the net income has been determined. So there you go. That's the budget. That's how to look at a, a building budget in commercial property management. And of course, uh, the bigger the building, the more complex the process. So that's a bit of a summary for you. As I said, uh, the property management budgetary process is the job of the property manager, and they really do need to think about what they're doing, get the industry perspectives, and of course, plan their way through the whole budget for the landlord well prior to the beginning of the financial year. So if you'd like more tips and ideas uh, regards this topic and others, for industrial office or retail property, you can go to our website at commercial-realestate-training.com. And uh, by all means, get the regular podcasts that we put out through iTunes, and this is one of them here. Uh, you can get the podcast and listen to it on your iPhone or your iPad or perhaps even your Android phone. And at that website, we also have a regular newsletter which sends templates, tools and ideas out to the agents and the brokers around the world who are part of our online community. So my name is John Highman. You have uh, been part of a video supporting commercial real estate agents and brokers around the world with a specific topic. Thanks for listening to us today, and I hope to catch you again very soon on our iTunes channel. This is John Highman signing off for now.